Hello, cool ass, it's Pablo here, and welcome back to Barca Universal, and welcome to the match review of Dynamo Kiev nil, Barcelona 1. Barcelona have done it, they've won away from home, and in one of the most important games in our recent history, we all said before the game, we absolutely have to win this game, yes or yes, it's non-negotiable, we have won. Ansel Fati has got the goal, Barcelona have got their most important win in recent times, and we are now very close to completing our objective, at least for now, in the Champions League. After losing 3-0 to Benfica and Bayern Munich, we all said, beat Dynamo at home, we've beaten them at home. Beat Dynamo away, we've beaten them away. And then beat Benfica at home, which we still have to do. And by the way, Bayern Munich have beaten Benfica 5-2 tonight, so the plan is coming along. We just need to beat Benfica at home, and we are there. We're getting close, guys. Now let's get in to the match review. And right here is the lineup that Sergi Barjuan elected to go with for tonight's game. Of course, he had to get this one right. I think, to be fair, the first half wasn't great from Barcelona. To be honest, all night long, it wasn't great either. Look, we had Longley coming to defence there. To be fair, I think he had a very good game, Longley. He did later go off injured, which is, again, more bad news. Another injury for Barcelona. I think Mingueza is actually really struggling at right back right now in a back four. I still feel as if his, his best position is right centre back in a back three. In midfield, it was interesting there to see Gavi push to the right. You had Anasu off to the left and Memphis up front and then De Jong there next to Nikon Busquets. I thought Nikon Busquets had good games, especially Busquets in there. But De Jong, again, guys, just seemed very lost to me. I just don't really know what his role is at Barcelona right now. And I think a lot of guys would agree, really. I know he was just come back from injury. But certainly when Xavi comes in, he's going to be one of the main players I'm looking at in terms of let's get things right with De Jong. He's such a special player, but we've got to be using him and properly instructing him in these sorts of games. But let's start with the match action, guys. There is quite a lot to cover. I think, to be fair, the first 15 minutes from Barcelona were very good. I think we could have taken the lead early on. Memphis to had a good shot well blocked but I think overall our pressing was a lot better that's what I was impressed with in the opening 15 minutes you know we were much higher up the pitch we were kind of suffocating Dynamo and that's really good we were playing a good offside trap we were winning the ball back quickly we seemed hungry to get the ball back and that was very good to see however after that guys and really for the remainder of the half it just wasn't good enough from Barcelona we just fell back into our low and it's almost as if we forgot guys that we had to win this football match it just wasn't good enough all round uh, Dynamo had several chances Shaparenko missed two really good opportunities opportunities that was a good save by Stegen in there with his leg as well that that could have been a goal from and I just think in general we completely lost our way and that isn't good enough I think right now we just seem completely incapable of playing a 90 minute match and considering we are playing a sport that's 90 minutes long that isn't ideal I think that's been the case actually for a while now you know if we are going to win and we are if we are going to play well we can only play well for you know maximum 60 65 minutes and the rest of the game you know we'd have to you know trudge through it a bit and that isn't really ideal for an elite team we know that with our fitness levels guys we just can't really seem to compete on the highest level right now. I think we're lucky really that Dynamo are, for me, probably one of the poorest sides in this season's competition. They don't score when they get close to the goal. They don't look nowhere near imposing enough. But I think even them today, guys, they recognised that, hang on a minute, you know, this Barcelona team aren't anything special. And when they actually pressed us, guys, and when they actually went for us, they did create some good chances. But as I say, you know, they just couldn't take their chances today. And ultimately, we did get away with it. And by half time, guys, you know, despite our good start, it just wasn't really looking good for Barcelona. We just feel so broken and so you know unable and incapable right now and that kind of, I suppose hurts we did have a good chance at the end of the half with Nico uh, Memphis actually blocked his header almost off the line that wasn't ideal either but we went in at half time at nil nil and of course coming out in that second half I was just hoping really you know that we weren't we weren't really thinking yet we are going to get the goal because we weren't playing well enough but we're just hoping something happens that we just got the goal from somewhere ultimately we did get that goal but I think before then you know there were a few good chances for Barca and I think Longley actually was our biggest threat in the first 15 minutes of the second half and I think overall as, as I said I thought Longley had a really good game which was really good to see unfortunately he went off injured so I don't know when he's going to be back but it looked like Barcelona got their moment about the 65th minute I think this was when it looked like we'd won a penalty and honestly in this sort of game that felt like the way through to me that felt like yeah this is our moment we've got a penalty we haven't been playing well it's been a, a tricky away game you know we look really broken and poor again right now but we've got the penalty that we need but no Ansu appeared to be fouled. There was a bit of a kerfuffle in the penalty area. De Jong got the ball to the to the number 10. He looked as if he'd been fouled, but on the replay, it did seem as if Ansu actually kicked the Dynamo defender's leg. The referee overturned it. Thankfully, Ansu was okay. I was just hoping, you know, we didn't have the, the penalty overturned. And then also Ansu got injured on, on, the, on his right knee as well, by the way. But thankfully, Ansu was all okay. But still, no penalty for Barcelona. Very soon after that, actually, Dembele came on there for his first appearance of the season. He came on for Pablo Gavi at right wing. 
And a quick note on Dembélé before we go any further. I thought he was really, really good off the bench. You know, if you're thinking about that, so his first game back since he got injured at the Euros, that's a really good return from Dembélé. And I think whenever we see Dembélé come back after an injury, we always think, you know, this is great news. He just looks like a completely different player to anyone we've got in the squad. And I'm really hoping with Xavi now when he comes in, he's got his front three set there. Anasu off the left. Dembele off the right and Memphis down the middle. For me, that is absolutely clear. We look so much more dangerous. And if we've got a proper system behind that, we're going to be in a real, real good time. I, th I honestly do feel that Dembele looks really, really sharp. And if he gets his, up, his full fitness up, if he adds end product to his game, we're going to be in a lot of luck. And for Barcelona, we certainly were in luck because the goal did finally come. And of course, it's from the teenage sensation, Ansel Fati, the golden boy of Barcelona. He gets the goal. I mean, Gethan on the right-hand side, who really, I think, again, had a very poor game and his crosses were inaccurate all night long. He tries putting one back. It's a better ball along the floor. It's intercepted, though, before it reaches its, uh, it reaches its, its intended target in Dembele, and it's deflected into the path of Ansel Fati. And you've got to say, this finish from Ansel is absolutely brilliant. He rifles it into the roof of the net. Pass ball, Shannon goal. No chance for the Dynamo keeper and a huge goal for Barcelona. What a finish by Ansel by the way, who I don't think was having his best game at all, but that is what he's also got in his locker. Not only is he a fantastic player, but he is a deadly finisher in the penalty area, an absolute killer, and that's great to have. That's why I really love Bansal Fatty. And on a night like this, guys, where we knew Barcelona needed a massive win, one of the most important in recent history, and Ansel was the man who strikes there. And you can see what it meant to the team too. The celebrations were wild. Everyone seemed really rejoiced by that. And as we said in the preview, rightly so, because this was a really, really important game. Before the game was up, as we touched on Longley had to go off injured for Araujo. Uh, Dynamo did have a few good chances, actually. One from a corner in the, in the 89th minute that they probably should have scored, to be fair. And also one just before that that Tostegan produced a good save for. Good save by... Uh, to Stegen later on there and actually all round I think to Stegen had a lot better game today which is really good to see and also hopefully for our future to Stegen we need him to be performing a lot better in golf we're going to be winning important matches that's a key in my opinion but Barca win Barca get another 1-0 win in the Champions League as we did at home to Dynamo Kiev look it's not sparkling it's not massively impressive but to be honest right now is that really what we're looking for we absolutely had to win this game and we've won it so thank you to the team thank you to Sergio Juan. What an absolutely massive win for Barcelona. A really, really important night for us. As I mentioned, Bayern Munich also did win. So in the Champions League, at least, things seem clear for Barca. Beat Benfica on match day five, and then we're in a great spot. It's pretty simple now for us. We know if we win that game, we will be through. Yes or yes, that is that. We'll be in the round of 16. And to be honest, with the way this group started, that would be great news. So it's a big game. It's a really important game. And who knows, even a draw could do in that one. But let's not take any chances here, guys. Benfica could still have the goal difference in us. So with, with only the fact that we've only won 1-0 there, guys, in both games against Dynamo, and of course lost 3-0 in, in both previous encounters to Benfica and Bayern, let's not take any chances. A win against Benfica is what I'm looking for. We all said it. Dynamo, we have to beat them twice. And Benfica, we have to beat them at home. We're on track. Two out of three is done. Up next for Barcelona, it's Celta Vigo away in La Liga. That's slightly to be said here about Juan's last game in charge. And even before then, guys, the official announcement of Xavi as manager could be done. Let's wait and see for the next few days. Xavi is very close to Barcelona, so let's see what happens. Lots of news coming up, guys, before the international break. But I will see you, of course, very, very soon for more content on the channel. We get the win tonight. That should be great news for Barcelona. And good night.